Alright, now I'm going to throw a knob and all form. That is a form where the, uh, let me see which piece of clay I want here. That's a form where the base and the lid are thrown all as one piece. So I'm going to center the clay. And I drill my hole. And I want to make the bottom like a cylinder on this piece because I'm not going to do a lot of trimming on it later on. So I'm going to open out that floor. And I've left the wall a little uh, thicker at the top. That's because it's going to close up eventually. Like, uh, uh, and so I want to don't want it to get too wide and then have to close it up. So I'm going to start by opening or pulling up the wall on the bottom section and kind of ease out of the top. Notice my pull doesn't come all the way up to this uh, skinnier part here. I'm going to get that thinned out. And now I'm going to start to lean towards the inside and watch that. Oops. Took my hands off too fast. You see how the wobble started there? It's because I pulled my hand away when it started to stick. All right. So I'm going to just try to keep control and make that go away. Now I'm going to lean towards the inside as I do this pull. But I'm not going to get my rim too thin because I want to continue to collar it. And if I get it too thin, um, the collar won't work as well. If you have a thin rim while you're trying to collar, that rim tends to want to rip on you. So see how I've uh, taken my wet fingers and looped them around here? Remember, every couple collars, it's important to come back in and do another pull. And so again, I'm trying to use a little bit more pressure on the outside. Now I got this a little wide here. At the bottom, you can see how it's starting to want to sag on me. And so hopefully, I can use my rib on the outside and strengthen that up. It just got a little thinner. Um, and out at a little bit more of an angle than I had intended it to. Taking away the clay or the slip on the outside um, both compresses the clay and makes it a little bit stronger, but also uh, takes that water away so that your wall, your wall does not continue to um, absorb that water and get weaker and weaker. So I've done a couple of collars. Now I'm going to do a. Uh, sorry, I've done a couple pulls. Now I'm going to do a collar. Remember, when you collar, you wrinkle that clay, so it's important to do pulls in between collars. You can't just call with our clay at least, you can't just collar it into place. It's real well aged clay um, and a lot of experience. You may be able to do it real fast, um, but generally in our studio that's not what we're working with. All right, and again I'm compressing these walls. Um, to try to add some strength and get away the extra of that water. So I'm making this pretty bulbous round kind of form here. And that means that I've stretched this clay about as far as it can go. So I keep running out of clay to pull until I do another collar. I can no longer reach down below to use that clay that's at the bottom. Um, which is, I mean, by design. And so I have to get my height and uh, my knob, what will eventually be my, the handle at the top, out of this clay that I'm, I'm collaring and pulling. Notice that my collar at the top there, even before I bumped into it there, um, is getting kind of uneven. That's pretty typical when you're collaring, that you will eventually have to take some of that height off or some of that extra clay off the top off. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'm just going to cut a little bit of this off of here with the, uh, with the needle tool. And then I'm, I've got some wobble happening here, again, where I got it too skinny. And so I'm going to compress that, strengthen that a little bit. And then I'm going to come back, do another collar and another pull, and another collar and another pull. Take your time here because uh, you... Um, twists and things like that can cause you problems later on. And so you want to be as, as slow and gentle with the clay as you can reasonably be to get done what you need to get done. Um, 
A lot of times people don't quite leave themselves enough clay at the top to do the knob, and I'm kind of borderline with how much I left myself here. Because I got this piece so wide, I didn't really leave, leave myself a lot of clay to work with up at the top. Um, I also recommend not speaking, not talking while you're, or doing other stuff while you're trying to throw. When it's time to throw, just focus on the throwing. I know for myself, when I work in my studio at home, I'll throw a bunch of the same form in one day. So one day I'll just, you know, for an hour I'll sit down and I'll just throw mugs, or I'll just throw knob and alls. And that way even if I have a couple that got kind of funny, I tend to work through some of the trouble. Um, with them. In class I often do a bunch of demos and so I'll do a whole bunch of different things in one day. And what that often means is that the pieces I work on aren't as nice. <laughs> they, they, uh, I get distracted, I get focused on other things, and I'm not as well, uh, well um, focused, I guess, on what I'm working on. So I'm using a rib basically to get this, uh, this wobble out, get the, some shaping happening on my my knob handle here. And I'm just, I get a little dry, so I'm going to add some water there and work on that. So the idea with the knob and all is that you don't have to measure for a lid. You've got your lid built in already. Now there are some advantages and some disadvantages to that. One advantage, I think, is it goes a little faster. You don't have to do math or keep a measurement or, or use your calipers or, or whatever it is. Um, but there are different kinds of lids. This particular piece that I, yeah, I keep catching my rib on there, I'll switch ribs. Um, this particular piece that I'm working on here, I'm planning to just uh, have the rib, or have the, have the lid, excuse me, um, get cut off of here once it's dry. Um, another method that I sometimes use is I'll take something like a wooden stick and I'll push in on the side about here um, to make a gallery. This piece of gallery is not going to really work because I would push that line in right about there and you notice that the piece is at an angle there. I would have to straighten this wall up first and I'd like to keep this guy fairly bulbous. So I'm not going to do that. Now I'm going to cut some of this clay off of here. Some of this extra clay off of here. Get an undercut in there and then I can take my wire tool through like this. Get my hands dry and clean and I can lift this guy off of here. <laughs> 